It takes a lot of guts and knowledge to take this piece of wood down to the very minimum, you know. And the, and the house are with the tradition, that tradition of um, regularity of thought, the, the strength, the rigidity, the, all the things. He couldn't really go further in his thicknesses of the wood as the Spaniards. And that is because the base resonance of the Hausa, they, it hasn't got to the level of the, if you listen to the first recording of Segovia in the 1912, uh, Ramirez, um, sort of Santos Hernandez, the, the base is a base, it's very sort of deep and and, uh, and the house that he never got, that resonance never got to that level. And that is precisely, this is my opinion for what it's worth, is because he didn't quite go a step farther into that uh, situation, you know. I like the adage that the best guitars are built on the cusp of disaster, which means that they're just strong enough to hold together. That means that they're maximally able to respond without breaking. And this is, in fact, I got a guitar that I'll show you later. Well, I've taken that guitar to, to the streams and it's produced a, a sound that, um, to me, is, it points in the right direction to what uh, Taurus did. And the soundboard I'm taking it down to the bare minimum is uh, hardly a millimeter thick. I use the strut in like this because it's the Taurus one, but it, it could use a lot of strutting and practically arrive at the same level, you know, if you work this properly to it. Because the strutting in here is a reinforcing element, it has slight implications on the, on the other aspect, but uh, is this the soundboard what it tells you and how to control um, there is a lot of um, talking about tuning the guitar to G, G sharp and all that. Now the people, uh, I think to me it's a, it's a dead, that's a, what they call a dead duck. Because uh, some of the uh, sort of innovatory guitars today, they are tuned to that. And they haven't got the quality that requires a classical guitar, you know. And that uh, they go, there is a lot of speculation about tuning uh, this soundboard to a spe specific frequency. And that it cannot be done on the open sort of thing. And when you put it in there, the, everything changes. So the, uh, the G sharp uh, happens, or they, but so they tell me because they really make a remark on there about the G sharp. But um, in my experience with, with Bream, we never suggested to me that the guitar should be tuned to G or G sharp or whatever. What happened is that some guitars, for some reason, sound better uh, at that, or the people think they sound better. But what would happen is that's the area where the normal guitar, the resonance of the normal Spanish guitar concentrate is in a space of about 10 or 12 cycles. And that is it, but you cannot control that. It happened by, if you like, by natural resources that in the guitar is built up to respond to that, that set of frequencies. And when some people think it hits there, it's a good sound. Well, I don't think that is because you could tune anything to G sharp or G and not produce the sound quality. I read somewhere that Herman House, I used to sit on the chair with a jug of beer and get the guitar in tune by taking here and, you know, and there pieces or scraping. And I think that is, uh, to me, total, total nonsense. Uh, people today, uh, they, they tune, they get, they finish the guitar and then they tune the guitar by t with a little um, planes taking piece from the bars and all that sort of thing and uh, until they get um, the resonant they think it is. Well, it could, it could work to a, a specific frequency, but um, we haven't got to, 
to the to have quite enough knowledge to produce um, a more or less control fixed resonance. Uh, and so it's, all this is open and it's good in a way because he, he creates a, a field to people to think about it, you know. And, uh, but I mean there is a, um, a lot of, you could, you could really um, change this by uh, scraping and not scraping. There is um, another opinion, they said that Santos Hernandez used to scrape, you know, and well, I mean, if you do that, I mean, the soundboards will be, will be like this, you know. And uh, I don't, I, I don't think that is. If you, in order to do that, you had to control every aspect. Um, if you was a steel made guitar, you could calibrate everything. But do you put it, you'll have the end result. But with what you can't, you can't really do it with any certainty anyway. The guitar is in the guitar mold. The sound box is in the guitar mold. Uh, initially, the back is not on so that I can have access to uh, the outside of the face and the braced interior. And I will do systematic, uh, minute removal of wood and sanding and profiling and shaping. Um, I say systematic in that I take readings off of specific spots of the face and I track um, the activity of the face through its sound because that will imply to me presence or absence of stiffening mass in those areas. And I'm particularly concerned with crafting or creating something that has a response gradient. This is very fundamental and critical to my thinking. What I mean by that is that when I voice my instruments and when I test them for the resonance, I want to hear an even gradient of tonal change going from the middle to the perimeter. I do not want to hear any sudden decreases or increases or drop-offs. I don't want to hear an open sound here and then a tight sound here alternating with another open sound down here. When I hear that, I know that there is something happening here which is um, elevating the frequency response and that's going to act against my desire to have a coupled, evenly integrated um, plate that can respond as a graded unit. I don't want to have any lumps or low spots or high spots. They will create unevennesses and inequalities in the sound. I also am very concerned with building into this a good monopole, which is low end response. So I'm concerned with lowering the fundamental of the sound box at this stage of operations before I put the neck on. The adding of the neck, the adding of the strings, everything will tighten and tense the system up. So the response of everything, as of from that moment on, um, will be in a much higher response register. So I want to start out with something that is very low, so that when it goes higher as a function of the addition of the strings and the tensioning of all the woods, it's not going to go way too high, which is what it would do if this thing started out tighter to begin with. And I think this is a very, very open, satisfying monopole sound. This is what I shoot for. You had to arrive to the same conclusions. Because, you know, it's, uh, you had to accept the tradition. You had to question it and learn from it. And then uh, study that and put your point of view based on that one. You don't, you know, I don't think it's good of saying, you know, invent something. It's all here. It's, it's all here.